Draft lottery party next MSG at Penzi presented by Resorts World Casino. And Zion is still a possibility. The Knicks at worst are going to be in the top four. Cavs dropped to five. Suns dropped to six. And in the top four right now, we have Memphis, the Lakers, the Knicks, or the Pelicans. So this has been a volatile, <laughs> a volatile. I mean, you watch it along, you're like, whoa, you know. Three teams that shouldn't have been in the top wow. four jumped into the top four. We didn't see this one coming, but that's why you have the lottery. I mean, how happy right now are, are, are the representatives containing themselves with the Lakers, Memphis, no. and the Pelicans to be sitting there to get a top four pick? That's and potentially – a number one. Like now, they're by, still in play. by the way, Memphis in the top four means Boston's not getting. But you pick. know what their uh, chances were to get number one when they started? Who's Where's this now? Which one? Like uh, the Give me a team. Pelicans. What were their chances? Pelicans 2%? chance at number one is uh, was 0. 0.06. 0. 0.06. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was Lakers? Lakers right here. Like six percent. Okay. Yeah, and what 0. was 0. and what was Memphis? Uh, Memphis for number one, six percent, and for top four, 0. 0.07. There you go. Lakers uh, number Those one is two percent. Those three teams only had six percent chances to bump up right. seven percent. And you had you had Cleveland dropping so you, out and Phoenix. Cleveland's second worst record. Yeah. Phoenix, third worst record. So, you know what? If you're a Knicks fan right now, you got to Both feel those pretty teams were like 50 50 right. yeah. to right. fall all the way right. down, and they right. both did. So, the right. teams that had the percentages that were a little bit higher, uh, we're talking about the Cavs and, yeah. and, them. and the Suns. Yeah, they're now, now not in the top know, four. Which is so, a good sign for the Knicks. You a would great think. sign for the like, Knicks. But the Knicks had the best chance to get that number one pick at 14%. The other teams only had six and six and six. And, I, you know, so you got the Pelicans here in the top four. And, of course, all the talk about Anthony Davis. I also mentioned that Boston, because Memphis is in the top four, will not be getting the Memphis pick. Mm -hmm. So Boston's going to have three number ones. They get the Kings pick. They get the Clippers pick in their own. Right. Instead of four number ones, Celtics going to have three number ones. Okay. And with the Pelicans getting a number one, you wonder how this may impact what happens to Anthony Davis. It's very important here. Yeah. Big topic uh, come NBA offseason. Well, Pelicans are going to be able to rebuild quick if they got a top four pick and they trade Anthony Davis and everyone's willing to trade the kitchen sink for him, <laughs> including picks and players and all this. This could be a quick turnaround for the Pelicans in order to rebuild. All right, so the, they're getting underway here. The last four picks here, top four picks, the last four selections to decide who uh, where the Knicks are going to go, and uh, boy, this is and can, this can, gets to be big time. Can we, fired <laughs> wait, 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 guys, this we're talking excited. about this. All right, here we go. The, the players that are sitting there too. I know. Woof. Here, here we, we go. go. Here we go. Lakers. Lakers. The Knicks at least a top three pick. I can't talk. <laughs> can I breathe or not? Oh. Knicks three. It's all right. All right. That's all right. That's all right. So the Knicks are going to get three. Who's going to get one? Still got a pick in there. Knicks at three. Memphis. The Pelicans get the Pelicans? number one pick in the Memphis is what? two. And the Pelicans with their new GM, David Griffin, get the number one overall pick. Wow. Are you kidding? Unbelievable. Oh, come on, man. Well, Knicks, Knicks at three. You know what? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? We talked about it. We, we talked about the guys potentially there in those top three. I know. I mean, the four spot could have gone either way, not, not necessarily knowing. Right. But in that top three, you're going to you get know. somebody. You're going to get an impact player right away, that's for sure. You know, well, you look at how this, this, this broke down. Memphis, again, 6% chance yeah. of the top pick, uh, and they get second. The Pelicans had a 6% chance of the top pick, and they end up getting first. Wow. Unbelievable. It Unbelievable is. how this went. The Lakers get fourth. Cavs and Suns, and very disappointed, obviously. So those are the big surprises right there, right? Yeah, I mean, look, there the is... Pelicans were fighting for the playoffs all year. They were almost in the playoffs. And then they end up jumping up to the number one pick. All right, now here's a question for you. All right. For the Knicks. Yes. You're at three. You figure, you figure breaking it down with these two at the top, mm -hmm. Williamson and John Moran are going one, two. You would think. But now you got Memphis Anthony Davis... Memphis has Mike Conley, so you got to think they got a they got a, a point guard, pretty stable. And does the presence of Davis impact Zion? No, no, I no don't way. Think so. No. Does it make it more likely? <laughs> I wish. All right. Well, I wish. Hey, oh, no, no. Hey. Yeah, you, there's you guys are laughing. At, you guys yeah. laughing at me? No, no, no. We're laughing at the fact of like Zion. Would would you pass would, on I him? I would love. For okay. Him to fall All right. Yeah. Let me ask you this: If you get Zion, is it more likely that you trade Anthony Davis? I don't know if Anthony Davis is going to, going to want to leave now. 
interesting point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when, when, when he starts playing with him and he, uh, he sees what an impact this guy is and what he's going to bring to that franchise in that city, I don't know. Anthony Davis might back off on his trade request. All right, so let's say it's three yep. mm -hmm. with R.J. Barrett. Mm -hmm. Just throwing it out there. Very happy. Yeah. Very happy. Until I laid eyes on Zion Williamson and saw him play, R.J. Barrett was the projected number one. Yes, I, they, there was times throughout the season while we talked about it. I mean, his ability, how he, you look at the numbers. He was, him and Zion were mirroring each other with their right. numbers throughout this season. And then we talked about his game, his talent level, being able to, yeah, hit it from the outside, but being a lefty, being able to create and get to the rim as well. As well. No, he was a big time impact in college basketball. When Zion was out, he carried this Duke team. When Zion had that that injury when he blew out his shoe and he hurt his knee. Uh, so the Knicks are going to get a big time impact player, uh, depending on who knows. Maybe John Morant won't get picked by the Grizzlies and then they're mm -hmm. going to get a point guard, which is you know something that they've been longing for years. So the Knicks are in a very good position with three. I, I, we've said it all along. So yes. One, two, and three, you're, you're, you're ecstatic about where you are out of this draft lottery. You're hoping for one. You're mm -hmm. shooting for the stars, obviously. Didn't get that, but you got one, two, or three. I think that's the second best option. And you have the ability to really turn things around with free agency and a high pick in this NBA draft that's going to make a big-time impact player. I think it's worth bringing up again. Now, Memphis reportedly, Mike Conley, maybe the subject of trade rumors or last mm -hmm. year, yep. that was a word. Yeah. If they decide to keep him, mm -hmm. now they have a new GM in Memphis looking for a new coach. Maybe they keep Conley and pass on John Morant? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it depends on what you're going to do with Conley. I don't know if they're going to be able to move that contract is one mm -hmm. of the things, though, Wall. Uh, yeah, that's tough to move that, that It's uh, tough to move but. that contract, but you also have to keep in mind a player like John Morant. I mean, he does so many things on the floor, his court vision. He's actually he's taller than uh, Mike Conley, so he has that size and, and that length, but his athleticism is what really surprised us throughout the tournament. Yeah, his athleticism, I was impressed with his court vision. Yeah. He has an NBA game that is just ready to go. And the guy is just a human highlight film. He jumped over a guy for dunks. And <laughs> we were all questioning, right, when we watched him play in the Missouri Valley, which is the conference, small school, small mm -hmm. conference. And we questioned what he was going to do against the bigger schools. Mm -hmm. He had a triple-double in the tournament, and he went off for, for, for a big-time game. So you can see he can play against big-time level players in college, and I think he'll, his game will translate perfectly to the NBA. Yeah, and the one thing about it is if you're going to keep Mike Conley, I don't know. We, we say you always draft on talent, right? Yeah. Are you going to draft a player like John Morant and play him behind Mike Conley? Like, is he a player that can come in and he's, he's coming off the bench for you? I mean, he's, a, for me, one of those players that can come in and impact right away. Right. If you give him the time, he has to have the time to also develop. And that's another thing I think the Knicks have going for them. Their roster is completely like, okay, when you're drafted by the Knicks, you get to really play yes. a lot. And, you know, that's one thing that Kevin Knox, we saw, he, he, he got a ton of minutes. He got to play through mistakes. He wasn't getting yanked in and out of the lineup. And when you're a rookie, that, that helps your development when you can get a lot of playing time and experience out there on the floor. So who knows what the Knicks roster is going to look like next year, obviously, with free agency. But coming into this season, I would think a top three pick would definitely want to be playing for the Knicks because of uh, the direction that they'll be able to elevate this franchise to. Now, is R.J. Barrett a three? Yes. He's, it's a third yes. overall pick. Is he a three? Uh, yes. In terms of position? Yeah, he's a wing. He's a small forward, right. small two forward. guard type. Mm -hmm. Great handles. Lefty can shoot. You know, um, and he's and I think he's just going to continue to get better. The, the way he dominated college basketball at 18 years old was impressive. So he's 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 going to be he's going to be a great pro, no question. All right, just getting started here as we break down what all of this means for the Knicks. Fran Fraschill is going to join us. His perspective straight ahead. Pelicans, Grizzlies. Knicks at three, Lakers, Cavs, and Suns fall big time. For more great videos from the MSG 150, check out our right there. And remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.